Hello guys, how are you doing? In this lesson, we will finally generate the final video of our animation through a process called render. Rendering is the process in which all scene information, such as objects, materials, and lighting is finally calculated to generate a final image or video. There are two tabs here in the Properties Editor that are related to render. The Render tab, which is the one with the icon of the back of a camera. And the Output tab, which is the one with the printer icon. In the Render tab, we configure properties related to quality and visual properties of the rendering process itself. An example of render property that we can enable on this tab is Ambient Occlusion. The Ambient Occlusion creates this shading at the corner of the surfaces, enhancing the image contrast. Now, here in the Output tab, we will configure the properties of the final file that will be generated, such as dimensions, file type, type of compressions, among other things. If we look here in the dimensions, we will see that by default the rendering is done with the resolution of 1920 by 1080. If you want to render at this size, there is no problem. But if your computer is not very fast, or if you want to test smaller, you can choose a percentage of this size down here. I will put 50% which means the final video will be rendered with half of these values. Down here, we define the time interval that will be rendered. As this value is already adjusted according to what we set here in the timeline, if we leave it as it is, it will already render the 10 seconds of animation that we want. In addition to these properties of the Dimensions panel, we have to set the properties of the file that will be rendered here in this output panel. In this button with a folder icon right here at the beginning of the panel, we can define the place and the file name. I will click on Desktop to save the file to my desktop, and I will rename it Airplane Animation up here. Now, just click Accept and it will save the file name and location. Now, we have to choose what type of file to render in this File Format menu. As we want to save a video, I will click on this FFmpeg Video option here at the end. And now, to finish, I will open this Encoding subpanel and change the container from Matroska to MPEG-4 here. Now, to render the final video with all these features, just come here in this Render menu, and since we want to render a video and not an image, let's click on Render Animation. When we do this, we will see that Blender will render one image at a time. This process may take a while, depending on the properties of the scene and your computer. And when the process is over, you can go to the address you saved your file and open the video. In my opinion, this video is pretty cool this way, but I will show you something else that will make the video even better. In real life, when we shoot objects that move very fast with a camera, those objects are blurred in the video. The name of this effect is Motion Blur. Unfortunately, the render that comes enabled by the phone in Blender currently does not have this property. If we look here in the Render tab, we can see an option called Motion Blur. But this motion blur does not calculate the motion blur of objects, only camera motion. If we look at the top of the Render tab, we will see a menu called Render Engine. 
This menu has three render options, which are internal software we can choose to render. The two main ones are EV, which is the default render, and Cycles. Each has its advantages and disadvantages. But since EV's motion blur does not calculate the motion blur of objects, if we want this effect, we will have to enable Cycles. This render has different features that I explain in more detail in the Learn Blender 2.8 course. But if we look here, we will see that it also has an option called Motion Blur. And this motion blur of cycles recognizes the motion blur of objects. So, if we enable this option and we have the video rendered again, we will see the planes propeller blurred as in a real video. The only thing I'm going to do before rendering is to rename the file here in the output tab. I will click here in the folder and I will name the file Animation Plane Motion Blur to differentiate the file. Now, just click on Accept and click Render Render Animation again. You will probably notice that rendering with cycles is slower than Eevee. As I said, each render has its advantages and disadvantages. And while Cycles has many advantages, rendering time is actually a disadvantage compared to Eevee. But the quality of the final render is often worth it. After the render is complete, you can once again go to the place where you saved your file and open the video. And with that, we conclude our project and our Blender Crash Course. I really hope you enjoyed the course. And if you are interested in going deeper into Blender, I highly recommend you check out my Learn Blender 2.8 course. In this course, I explain in more detail all the concepts and tools we saw in this Crash Course. And if you subscribe to it, I recommend that you also watch all the lessons that cover the same topics, as I delve much deeper into them in this course. In addition, we will see several topics that were not covered in this course. I talk about more polygon modeling tools and techniques, subdivision, UV mapping, which is the preparation of models so that they can be properly textured, texturing, creation of different types of materials, more concepts and animation tools, more concepts and render settings, among other things. Also, in this course, I will produce with you two complete projects from scratch. We will create from zero the scene of this helicopter taking off, and the scene of this walking robot. So, if you enjoy this crash course and want to dig deeper into Blender and the 3D scene creation universe, sign up right now! And even if you don't want to sign up, thank you so much for attending the course so far! Congratulations on completing it! And I see you on the next time!